This is Santiago, the capital of Chile. In 1973, the national stadium was turned into a concentration camp as a military coup backed by the United States overthrew the democratically elected government of Salvador Allende. The leader of the coup was a fascist, General Augusto Pinochet, who rounded up Allende's supporters and brought them here. A young medical student, Roberto Navaretti, was one of them. These changing rooms were used as what when you were imprisoned here? They were used as uh, places where people were kept inside here, 50 or, or more. You can see that there was actually no room to move around here. Even, even all these places were full of people sleeping here and there were no blankets or anything. Even some people actually slept here. There was, no, there was very little room. When they started to torture you all, yeah. what did they do to you then? The techniques they used uh, were um, beating you, especially in, in sort of places where it could become very painful with a rubber truncheon, uh, and especially the genitals and the soles of the feet and, you know, the arms and various places. Over 2,000 people were confined here, many of them never to be seen again. Victor Hara was Chile's greatest balladeer. His songs had celebrated the popular democracy of the government of Salvador Allende. He was taken to the stadium, where he was a source of strength for his fellow prisoners singing for them until soldiers beat him to the ground and smashed his hands. In his last poem, smuggled out of the stadium, he wrote, What horror the face of fascism creates. They carry out their plans with knife-like precision. For them, blood equals medals. How hard it is to sing when I must sing of horror in which silence and screams are the end of my song. After two days, they killed him. How old were you? I was uh, 18. 18? Yeah. Oh. Does the fear that you experience there, is that something that imprints itself on the rest of your life? Yes, but we felt it was part of uh, what we were trying to build in this country. What they were trying to build was a just, equitable democracy that took control of Chile's economy from the United States and its proxies. For the invisible people of Latin America, Chile under Allende became an inspiration. In Washington, President Nixon secretly plotted to destroy the Chilean economy. We're gonna make the economy scream, said Nixon. In Santiago, General Pinochet, America's man, sent in his British-made bombers against the presidential palace. It was September the 11th, 1973, a date that held an infamy and irony 28 years later. My wife and our children were at the house, and they had a marvelous view of the uh, of these planes uh, winging over and then dipping down and and sending their bombs into the money that... from inside the palace Allende refused to leave true to his promise not to surrender the government for which the ordinary people of Chile had voted he broadcast this last message then he shot himself <laughs> En Chile su destino. Sigan ustedes sabiendo que mucho más temprano que tarde, de nuevo abrirán las grandes alamedas por donde pase el hombre libre para construir una sociedad mejor. Viva Chile, viva el pueblo, vivan los trabajadores.
with General Pinochet in power, Washington again denied it had destroyed another democracy. We had no contact with any of the people that carried out the military coup, and therefore the coup that overthrew Allende was done uh, without conduct, uh, contact with the United States. A very different story is told by these secret documents. In October 1970, the CIA cabled its man in Chile. It is firm and continuing policy that Allende be overthrown by a coup. When that happened three years later, a US official cabled back to Washington. Chile's coup d'etat was close to perfect. Fascism is a word that's often misused, but you've experienced it, the yeah. real thing. Yeah, I think so. I think uh, I... When, when did you realize that you were ensnarled by fascism? When did it manifest itself? I, I think it was, it was evident from the very beginning, the just the ferocity, the sheer brute force that they use, the disregard for any kind of human dignity. I mean, the, their aim was really to make you into a thing, in, I think, in order to protect themselves. Because if they made you into a thing, then they didn't have to have human feelings towards you. They dehumanized you from the very beginning. Once again, a Latin American elite was delighted to be rescued by fascism. A country has to be well set, has to be well run, well worked, and see that everyone does their work. Because if they don't, and that country goes to the dogs. And this is the one man that's been able to hold them. I don't believe there's any torching done in this country. Because you understand one thing. Why torture somebody when you can shoot them? This is where they tortured and killed them. Villa Grimaldi was once a palatial home in a suburb of Santiago. Under Pinochet, it became a place of horror. Today, it's a memorial to its many victims. Sarah DeWitt, then a student activist, was a survivor. What was the date that you were arrested? Do you remember? Oh, yes. I was picked up on the 3rd of April, 1975, 7 o'clock, on the dot. So the junta had been in power for about 18 months. Yes. So when I realized, you know, uh, someone had put what I imagine it was a gun, you know, on my back and saying, and said to me, um, don't make any noise, don't try to run because we will shoot you. Oh. You are coming with us. In a strange wooden tower like this, in spaces the size of a dog's kennel, people were tortured to death. They took me to this room. You know, they were punching me, hitting me, grabbing my nipples, telling me that I was a whore. So they asked me to take off my clothes, and they tied, they tied me up. And then I, they started giving me electricity. Now, the electricity was all the time inside my vagina, in my breast, and then it was going round, you know, round my body, my legs, my arms. And when they did that, you know, they would stop asking me, asking me questions, you know, and then touching me everywhere and shouting, abusing. And then they would go, they continue with electricity. Dwayne Claridge was head of the CIA's Latin American division in the early 1980s. Chile, the only reason it exists is because of Pinochet. At a huge human price. What human price? Give me a break. The thousands who were disappeared thousands, and murdered? Thousands? You count them. What thousands? Well, and I've don't seen... Talk, I've, to, talk to me about I, truth commissions. I've seen their names yeah, yeah. in the cemetery in Santiago. Yeah, I you're saying... Too. Yeah, you're there saying aren't they're thousands. Fakes. There aren't thousands. Well... There aren't thousands, sir. There are thousands, 
each name documented by human rights organizations, some of them remembered here on the memorial wall at Villa Grimaldi. You have a couple of friends there, like Jack. Yes, yes, I have friends, uh, mainly people from my training. You know, I have got, there is um, a girl there, uh, Jacqueline Drugy, another one, Cecilia Labrine. She was pregnant, Cecilia, three months pregnant when they took her. They took another woman, Elizabeth Rekas. She was seven months pregnant. She went missing as well. Doesn't bear thinking about, does it? No, because um, sometimes, you know, I think about what were they feeling, you know, when they were being killed and why, you know, and, well, uh, sometimes I think that I th think too much and I start feeling, you know, like the pain. What do you feel when you are being killed? And in such a way that I find it, well, I find frightening, really. Yeah. Because you wish, you know, that you could have done something for them. Such the isolation, you must feel totally, I don't know, I don't know what do you think, really. Alone. Yeah, very, very much alone. It was a period in which almost everybody in the present uh, situation regards as a dark time, in which the CIA played a major role. That's right. They played a major role in over overthrowing, uh, what's his name? Uh, what's his name was Salvador Allende. Uh, yeah, yeah, fine. Okay. He was democratically elected. Right, okay. Is that okay to yeah. overthrow a democratically elected government? Uh, yeah, Is no, it okay? It, it depends on what your national security in interests are. Are you denying that Pinochet caused huge suffering I in that don't, country? I don't, I, I, huge, I don't buy. That, that he committed crimes, I agree. Mm -hmm. But okay. it's worth it. Huh? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, Those crimes are yeah, worth it. Yeah, sometimes, unfortunately, uh, things have to be changed in a rather uh, ugly way. Levantate y mira la montaña de donde viene el viento, el sol y el agua. Que manejas el curso. <tose>